Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to apply a gradient text color to your copy using Divi's built-in options only. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to create a new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new. Uh, we're just going to call this page gradient and then I'm going to click on use Divi Builder. Now, in this case, I've started off with a new page, but you can uh, add this design to an existing page. All right, so in this case, I'm gonna build from scratch, uh, and the um, column structure we're gonna go with is this one right here. So I'm gonna select it, and then close this for now. Next, I'm gonna come over here to my section settings and add my background color, and my color here is going to be white. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that, and then save. Next, I'm gonna add a custom padding to the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna click here on design, spacing, and I'm gonna activate the change so my value here can be added both to the top and the bottom. And my value is going to be 215. And as you can see here, it's been added. Now it's time to add our gradient to our columns. So let's go ahead and save this. And then I'm gonna come over here to my row settings. So I'm gonna click here on this gear icon, click on background. And the first thing we're gonna do is to add a gradient. And this is going to go on column two. So I'm gonna click here on the second tab, click the plus button, and we're gonna add our first color. So I'm gonna paste it here. Now, if you wanna use this, the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so now it's time to add our second color. So I'm gonna click here and replace the default color. Next, I'm gonna to go to my gradient direction. By default, it's set to 180. So we're gonna set this to 150. And then for our start position, I'm gonna set this to 20 and my end position is going to be 60. So you can see here in the preview that we have this uh, shape and uh, which is unique and custom uh, other than using the uh, default that comes with Divi. All right, so the next thing we need to do now is to make this roll full width. So I'm gonna come over here to sizing. We're gonna say yes to make this roll full width. And then we're also gonna to go to use custom gutter width and we're gonna say yes. Now the gutter width is the space between the columns. So if we go all the way down to one, it means that we won't have any spaces between these columns. But of course, right now we don't have anything in these columns, so you won't be able to see this in effect. So the next thing we're gonna do here is to go to the spacing and we are going to add a margin to the top and the bottom and then also left and right. Okay, so I'm gonna click here on this chain because the value I'm gonna add here is going to be the same, so it's 50 pixels. So this is just adding space outside the uh, row itself. Right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is to add my left and right padding. So I'm gonna add it here, activate the chain so it's added both to the, to the right and the left. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is to add a text module to column two. So I'm gonna save here, click this plus button, and I'm gonna search for my text module and select it. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna replace this text with my dummy text here. But of course your text can be you know, anything, you can just add um, whatever text it is that you want to add in the text module. So the next thing we're gonna do is to set this text to heading two. So I'm gonna highlight it all. And then I'm gonna come over here where it says paragraph, click down this drop down, and click select heading two. So now my text is set to heading two. Right, so next I'm gonna come over here to background. So I'm gonna add a background to our text module and our color here is going to be white. Now it's time to customize our heading settings. So I'm gonna click, I'm just gonna hover over here on this text and click this um, brush tool. So first of all, I'm gonna start with the alignment. So I'm gonna come over here to text and I'm gonna align this to the center. And then for our heading text, so heading to text color, we are going to set this to black. So I'm gonna choose my color here. So the next stage now is to add our text size. So by default, it's set to 26, but uh, we're gonna set it to 67, so it's nice and big. But while we're on this page, we might as well add the sizes for our mobile devices. So I'm gonna click here on this little, uh, this little icon, click on tablet, and for the tablet, we're gonna set this to 50, and for the phone, we're going to set this to 40. So the reason why we're doing this is so that it's easier it, uh, on the eye on all devices. So the next thing we're gonna do now is to just come over here to letter spacing and we're gonna set this to minus two. So what this does is just brings all the text uh, slightly closer together. Right, so the next thing we're gonna do is to add a bottom padding. So I'm gonna click here on spacing and I'm gonna add padding bottom of 50 pixels. Now the next thing we're gonna do is to go to the filters because this is where we get to add our blending mode. So I'm gonna click here on filters and for our blending mode here, by default it's set to normal. 
So I'm gonna go through this and choose lighten and see how that looks. So you can see now, this has taken the gradient that we created in the background. Right, so next what we're gonna do is to add a divider to this. I'm gonna save, and then I'm gonna come over here, click this plus button and search for my divider module. I'm gonna select it. Right, so I'm gonna come over here to background and the background color I'm gonna add here is white. Next, we're gonna come over here to design spacing and we're going to add a left and right padding of 250 pixels. So I'm just gonna enter my value here. So now you can see this has reduced our divider. Next, we're gonna come over here to the filters, blend mode, and uh, again, we're gonna set this to lighten, and then we're gonna save. Right, so the next thing we're gonna do now is to add another row. So I'm gonna click on this plus button, and this time we're gonna add three equal columns, and then we're gonna start adding our gradients. So I'm gonna come over here to my row settings, background, and for our column, uh, for our column one uh, gradient, we're gonna click on the second tab to add our gradients, click this plus button, and then it's time to add our first color. So my first color here, I'm gonna paste it. And as I mentioned before, if you wanna use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the description below. All right, so now it's time to add my second color. So I'm gonna paste it like that. On the gradient type, make sure you leave it on linear. And then on the gradient direction here, we're gonna set this to 105. Next, we're gonna come over here to start and end position. So our start position here is going to be 20 and our end position is going to be 50. So this is just, uh, just so that we have a style to our gradient. Okay, so moving on, we're gonna go now to column two background gradient. So I'm just gonna scroll down here, click the second tab. Now, as we did before, we're just gonna go in and replace these colors with our own colors, okay? So now I'm gonna enter my second color, just replace this. And this time for our direction, we're gonna set this to 90 degrees and making sure that over here it's set to linear. And then our starting end position here is gonna be 40 and 60. Now moving on, let's go ahead and add our column three background uh, gradient. So I'm gonna click here on the gradient tool. Again, I'm gonna add my first color by clicking this plus button and then clicking the color palette. I paste my color in here, replace my values of my second color. And over here on the gradient type, we're gonna set this to, is leave this on linear. And our gradient direction now is gonna be 85. And then for our starting end position, it's gonna be 20 and 50. Okay, so now that we've um, added all our values, the next thing we're gonna do now is to go into the row settings. And as we did before, we um, made this full width. So let's click here on design and uh, click on sizing. So the first thing we're gonna do is to set this to full width, uh, use custom gutter width, and we're gonna set this to one. And this is pretty much similar to as we did before. Now, I mentioned that if you uh, reduce the gutter width, that reduces the space between the columns. And, I'm, and, I can, and you can see here in this example, that the more I go towards one, the closer they get, and now there's no spaces between them. So that's how the gutter width works. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do now is to go to spacing because we need to add some padding. So we're gonna start off with uh, left padding of 100 pixels. So we're gonna come over here and add my 100 pixels. So pretty much that's all we need to do. I'm gonna go ahead and save. And then over here now on um, the first uh, column, we're gonna add a blur module. So I'm gonna select it. Next, we're gonna add our icon. So I'm just gonna come over here to image and icon, and then I'm gonna choose the icon. And then over here, I'm just gonna scroll down and see what icon I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna go with this one. But uh, it doesn't really matter which icon you use. Uh, this will depend on your design. So the next thing I'm gonna do now is to add a background color. So I'm gonna come over here and add white to my background. Next, let's go to our icon settings because uh, most of the time uh, with the icon, it comes with um, dimensions and the sizes that we may not uh, uh, want to go with. So let's go ahead and customize this. So I'm gonna click here on this brush tool and uh, the first thing we're gonna do is to add our color and our color here is gonna be black and the uh, image and icon placement, uh, this is going to be on the top. Now, if you wanna change the size of the icon, uh, you have to come over here to use icon font size uh, set it to yes, and then you can just uh, adjust your size. So in this case, we're gonna set this to 51. Now let's go to our title and body text settings. So I'm gonna click here on this brush tool. So um, over here, we're going to uh, set our font weight to bold, our alignment to center, text color to black, letter spacing to minus one, and our line height to 1.2 EM. 
And then finally over here on the text, um, we're going to set this to 22. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is to come over here to spacing because we need to add our margin and padding settings. So I'm going to click here on spacing. So we're going to start here with the bottom and top um, margins. So over here, I'm going to add five pixels. Uh, top padding, we're going to set this to 50. Left and right, we're going to set this to 50 as well. So now we're going to go to our blend mode. So I'm going to click here on filters, go to my blend mode and choose lighten. Right, so the other thing that I need to do here, which I forgot to do, is to remove our body text. So I'm going to come over here to content, text, and I'm just going to delete all my content here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save. And then the next thing we're going to do is to add some content onto this. So I'm going to click on this plus button and add our text module. Select it. So let's start by adding our background color. And this is going to be white. Now we're going to go to the text settings. So over here, uh, we are going to add our letter spacing to 0 0.5 pixels. So I'm just going to scroll down here, add my letter spacing here. Our line height, we're going to set this to 2.3. And this time for our text orientation, we're going to justify this so that it fills the whole rectangle. And then for our text color mode, uh, we're just going to leave it here on dark. Now let's head over to spacing because we can see here that our text is way too close to the borders. So I'm going to click here on spacing and uh, we're going to start with our top and bottom padding of 100. So I'm going to enter my value here and you can see it's applied both to the top and the bottom. And we're also going to apply this to the left and the right. Now for this, we're going to do uh, something a bit different. So we're going to add a box shadow. So I'm going to come over here and choose my style. So I'm going to come over here to my blur strength, set this to 56. And the spread strength, uh, we're going to reduce this to about minus 12 pixels because we, we don't want it very aggressive. Okay, so it's very subtle as you can see. And for our shadow color, I think we can just go with the default. And then we're just going to go ahead and save. So now that we have all our content here on our first column, the next thing we need to do is just to uh, clone uh, these modules and add them on to the rest of the columns. So the quickest way and easiest way to do this is to hold down the command key. If you're on a PC, you hold down the control key. So I'm just going to select the items I need to copy. And now that they are both selected, all I have to do now is to hit the shortcut command C. If you're on a Mac, if you're on a PC, it's control C and this is to copy. So I've just done that. And then over here, it's command V or control V to paste like that. And then all, finally, all you have to do is to go in and change the icons to your liking. So I'm just going to go in quickly and do that. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to look for the icon. I'm going to go with uh, this one right here. Save that. I'm going to come to the last one, image and icon. And then I'm going to search for my icon. I'm going to go with this one here and save. So pretty much this is how you put together a layout using the gradients. So uh, if you want to reverse this, basically what all you have to do is to use the dark color. So in this case, you'd go with a very dark gray or black. But again, the process is the same. And uh, all those color values are all in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So let's finalize, save this page and exit the Visual Builder and take a look at the final design. So I'm going to click here on Exit Visual Builder. And you can see here we have a beautiful gradient there. And as we scroll down, So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.